In this project, we're going to deploy the lightweight Linux desktop Mate on AWS. On top of Mate, we're going to deploy XRDB, which allows access to the desktop environment from a remote desktop client. There are several ways this project can be used. One common scenario is deploying it as a shared development environment for a small team. The desktop image we build includes all prerequisites required to clone and build any project on our channel for all cloud providers. The only thing you need to add are your access credentials. Another popular use case is running a lightweight Linux desktop as a jump box into your cloud environment. It's a cheaper alternative to using a Windows-based jump box. We'll begin by provisioning the mini Active Directory instance, which provides centralized authentication for our desktop users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in AWS's Secrets Manager. Next, we'll use Packer to build a reusable Ubuntu image that has the desktop environment installed. We'll then take the AMI built from Packer and deploy an EC2 instance to test the desktop. Once initialized, we'll open a remote desktop client to the desktop server. At this point, you can pull out the credentials from Secret Manager to start the desktop environment. Here, I'm going to log in as Raj Patel. Now let's talk about the prerequisites for, for these AWS desktop projects. First off, there's a video out there called AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top to that. That walks you through how you create an IAM user in the console, give it the right permissions for doing Terraform builds, and then extract out an access and secret key that you'll plug into the builds. So what you'll need for this desktop build is you need that AWS account with that secret and access key, which you'll set as environment variables. Then you'll have to have the AWS CLI, you'll need to have Terraform, and you need to have Packer. All three of those need to be in your path. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the GitHub documentation and navigate to the download this repository section and then copy the git clone command. Then paste the git clone command into your development environment. This will download the code, put you in the right directory. So now what you want to do is in all our projects, we have a script called check ENV. And check ENV is going to go through all the prerequisites, make sure they're installed and in your path. And then more importantly, it's going to establish a connection to your AWS account using the AWS CLI with the credentials that you've provided. Now we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes about 30 minutes. About 15 of that is just taking the AMI. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to put it in the comment section below. The build has completed. So now let's go into the AWS console and take a look at what got built. Once in the console, you want to drill down into the EC2 section of the console. Three instances are, are deployed as a part of this project. The first is, is the mini AD instance. Mini AD instance is the identity provider for our desktop users. As a part of the AD deployment, we deploy four sample users. The credentials for each sample users are generated dynamically and stored securely in AWS Secrets Manager. The next EC2 instance is the Windows AD admin server. You will log into the server to manage your users and groups. During the demo, we'll log into the server to create the new mCloud user. The third EC2 is the main event. This is where we deploy the Mate desktop for testing. We'll click on that. Now the first thing we want to do is we're going to go to Actions, Monitor and Troubleshoot, Get Instant Screenshot. What you'll see here is on the console for the server, the Ubuntu Mate desktop login displays. This means the desktop has deployed successfully. The Mate desktop instance is built with the AMI we built with Packer. In our Packer build, we deploy Ubuntu as the base, and then we deploy the Mate desktop environment on top of that. In addition, we also install a couple of browsers. We install Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox. We install Postman for development. Then we also deploy VS Code. Now, the idea behind the server is that you can use it for building anything in our channel. So what we've done is installed all the prerequisites for all or everything on our channel. So that means the AZ CLI is there, AWS CLI, the G Cloud CLI, Docker, uh, Packer, and Terraform are all there. The only thing you need to add in this environment, and then you have VS Code so you can edit the code. The only thing you need to add in this environment is your credentials for your cloud cloud environment you're going to build in. We also deploy some EFS shared storage for this project. The shared storage is used for two purposes. The first one is it's used for persistent home directories. The second way we use the shared storage is we mount it in slash EFS and we do download all the code that we're going to build with this project 
into the shared storage. We are now ready to log into the Mate desktop and take a look at what got deployed. The first thing you want to do is you want to run the validate script on the project, and that's going to give you the fully qualified domain name of the Mate desktop server. So what you want to do is select that and copy it. Now you want to bring up the remote desktop client. Take that, put it in there, and you're going to get the XRDB desktop login. So what we need to do is go back to our secrets. We're going to log in as Raj Patel. Now what's a little bit irritating here is that you can't copy and paste into the logon dialog. You can copy and paste inside the desktop, but the logon dialog does not allow it for security concerns. So let's plug in Raj Patel's credentials. Once you've logged in, you'll see you have several desktop icons. So we've got Mozilla Firefox installed. We've got Google Chrome installed. We've got Postman installed. And then we have this utility called Only Office which allows you to open Office documents in this environment. We've also installed Visual Studio Code. And the cool thing here is that we have deployed all the prerequisites for everything on our channel. So you got the AWS CLI, AZ CLI, G Cloud, Docker, Packer, Terraform. So any project on our channel, you can pull down into this environment and build. All you got to do is add your credentials. So I've got um, EFS. And I have set up my credentials, so I pulled the setup projects for every environment. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to run check ENV. And it's going to go through and validate that the, all the requirements for that project is set. But just as importantly, it's going to validate that your credentials are correct and that you can connect to your AWS account. So at this point, you could use this to build any project. You just got to provide your credentials. Finally, if you're going to use this environment as a junk box, we've also installed KRDC. KRDC is the remote desktop client in this environment. In the section where we add a new user, we'll actually use this client to connect to our Windows AD box and add a new user. Now let's walk through creating a new user for the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is get into the desktop environment and you're going to, we're going to use this as a jump box. The next step is we're going to go back to the development environment and run validate. And validate is going to give you either the fully qualified domain of the Windows instance or the IP address. So this, you take the uh, domain name here. Let's go back to the desktop environment and let's go to applications, internet, KRDC. We're going to use this environment, like I said, as a jump box. So we want to go in here, we do RDP. That is the, the AD add-in box from the validate script. Click on that. And what we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to do R Patel. And we need to go back and get those credentials from Credentials Manager again. So I hit OK. Password from Credentials Manager. Okay, so this is the Windows AD admin box. And so what we want to do is I'm going to go to full screen here. And I am going to say, um, first off, we're on the Windows side. And so the first thing you'll notice is there is a Z drive. The Z drive maps the shared file system. What you can do on that is go in there and then go into the project directory and go to utils. And remember, when you add a new Linux user on the Windows side, you have to specify GID number, UID number, and UID. So we need to calculate what the next UUID is. So I'm going to go get next UID. It's going to come back and say, your next UID number for your next user you're going to add is 10,005. And I'm going to bring up administrative tools. Then I'm going to do active directory users and groups. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do view advanced features. So I'm going to go and expand my domain and I'm going to go to the users folder and I'm going to say new user. I'm going to call the user Mike Cloud. I'm going to give it a user login of mCloud. Hit next. 
You need to specify a password. I'm going to say don't expire. Hit next. And it's going to finish. So now we need to go to uh, my cloud. And we have a couple of things we need to set in here. The first thing is we go to attribute editor. And this is where you set the UID number, GID number, and UID. So I'm going to go to the GID number. And we're going to test set that to 10,001. That is the mCloud users group. OK. And then we're going to go back down to UID. In UID, I need to set the user ID of the Linux side. So I'm going to do mCloud, hit add. And then we need to specify UID number. And that's the one that we calculated to begin with. It's 10,005. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we've we've set the required attributes. Now we need to give some group membership. So I'm going to go back to properties here. And I'm going to say uh, member of. I'm going to say add and mcloud users. And let's just call this person in US. And then I'm also going to add and say Linux admins. And this user will also be able to sudo on the desktop environment. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, a quick thing you can test out here is you can go into um, here and say get next UID, hit run, and it's going to say 10,006 because 10,005 is now owned by the mCloud user. So at this point, we're ready to actually log into the desktop. So you bring up your remote desktop client. I'm going to hit connect. So we get the XRDB dialog. So I'm going to do mCloud, and I'm going to set the credential. Use the credentials I set when I added the user. And there you go. You've logged in as mCloud. If I bring up a shell, I can say ID, and it's going to show you mCloud. you got the GID number, which is mCloud users. Then you have the different groups that I assigned. Since I did Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash, and I am now root. So that's the steps for adding a new user into your desktop environment. At this point, after you've uh, played with the desktop environment, it's now time to be a good steward of your cloud accounts. And what you want to do is destroy your project. So you want to run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes for all the desktops.